Ezekiel chapter 17 and verse 1, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, put forth a riddle, this is an enigma, and speak a parable unto the house of Israel, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, A great eagle with great wings, long-winged, full of feathers, which had diverse colors, came unto Lebanon, and took the highest branch of the cedar. He cropped off the top of his young twigs, and carried it into a land of traffic. He set it in a city of merchants. And this is speaking of Nebuchadnezzar, a type of Antichrist. This great eagle with great wings, and the highest branch of the cedar was King Jehoiakim, also known as Coniah. And you can also read about this in Jeremiah chapter 24, where it says in verse 1, The Lord showed me, and behold, two baskets of figs were set before the temple of the Lord after that Nebuchadrezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away captive Jeconiah, that's Jehoiakim, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the princes of Judah with the carpenters and smiths from Jerusalem, and had brought them to Babylon. And so this also looks forward to the end, because that's when the parable of the fig tree is ultimately fulfilled at the end of the generation of the fig tree, which began in 1948. That's when the elect are gathered from the four winds to Jerusalem to reign with Christ for the thousand years. Notice they were in baskets. That means they were harvested, and the harvest is the end of the world, as we know from Matthew chapter 13. He also took of the seed of the land, Ezekiel chapter 17 and verse 5, and planted it in a fruitful field. He placed it by great waters and set it as a willow tree. And this is speaking of Zedekiah, who was appointed king by Nebuchadnezzar. And it grew and became a spreading vine of low stature, whose branches turned toward him, and the roots thereof were under him, so it became a vine, and brought forth branches, and shot forth sprigs. There was also another great eagle, with great wings, and many feathers, and behold, this vine did bend her roots toward him, and shot forth her branches toward him, that he might water it by the furrows of her plantation. And this great eagle is speaking of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and Egypt is symbolic of bondage. It was planted in a good soil by great waters, that it might bring forth branches, and that it might bear fruit, that it might be a goodly vine. Say thou, thus saith the Lord God, shall it prosper? Shall he not pull up the roots thereof, and cut off the fruit thereof, that it wither? It shall wither in all the leaves of her spring, even without great power of many people to pluck it up by the roots thereof. And what happens at the sixth trumpet? As we know from Daniel chapter 7, those three Christian nations are pulled up by the roots whenever Satan appears as the false Christ, the king of Babylon of the end times. Those three you see being plucked up by the roots in Daniel chapter 7 are Ephraim, Judah, and Manasseh, and that covers all 12 tribes. Christianity, that is to say, the Christian nations, because they're no longer Christian nations once they start worshiping the devil. Once a Christian nation starts to worship the devil, they're no longer a Christian nation. Yea, behold, being planted, shall it prosper? Shall it not utterly wither? When the east wind toucheth it, it shall wither in the furrows where it grew. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Say now to the rebellious house, Know ye not what these things mean? Tell them, Behold, the king of Babylon is come to Jerusalem, and hath taken the king thereof, and the princes thereof, and led them with him to Babylon, which means confusion. And you'll notice in Daniel chapter 11, the king of the south goes against the vile person in the first two and a half months of the hour of temptation. You can read of that in Daniel chapter 11, verses 21 through 30. So with Zedekiah, we have a type of that being the king of the southern kingdom even, and of Judah. Zedekiah going against Nebuchadnezzar was a type of the Christian nations going against the vile person, in my opinion, and that's probably the deadly wound spoken of in Revelation chapter 13. So again, behold, the king of Babylon is come to Jerusalem, which is where Satan shall appear, the king of Babylon of the end times, and hath taken the king thereof, and the princes thereof, and led them with him to Babylon, and hath taken of the king's seed, and made a covenant with him, 
and hath taken an oath of him, he hath also taken the mighty of the land, that the kingdom might be base, that it might not lift itself up, but that by keeping of his covenant it might stand. And remember, Satan makes a covenant with many for one week, as you can read of in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. But it's not a week of years, that is to say seven years anymore, because it's been shortened for the elect's sake, as Christ said in the Gospels. It's been shortened from seven years to a five-month period. So the midst of the week then becomes the middle of the five-month-long hour of temptation. But he rebelled against him in sending his ambassadors into Egypt. Zedekiah rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar, that they might give him horses and much people. Shall he prosper? Shall he escape that doeth such things? Or shall he break the covenant and be delivered? As I live, saith the Lord God, surely in the place where the king dwelleth, that made him king, whose oath he despised, and whose covenant he break, even with him in the midst of Babylon, he shall die. And so it was, Zedekiah's eyes were put out by Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and then he died in Babylon. He died in confusion, not having eyes to see, is what that's symbolic of. And Satan appears in the middle of that five-month-long hour of temptation, which is the term of the locust, which is May through September. And that happened in the middle of July, what I was just speaking of, that's when Nebuchadnezzar came to Jerusalem and put out the eyes of Zedekiah, and Jerusalem was burned with fire. That happened in the middle of July, which is the middle of May through September. Now, am I saying that the five-month-long hour of temptation will happen from May through September? No, I am not. All I'm saying is that's the term of the locust, and Satan appearing in the middle of the week, as it's written in 927 of Daniel, that week being shortened to a five-month period, it's something you might want to think about. The five months could happen at any time of the year, though, but May through September is the term of the locust. Neither shall Pharaoh with his mighty army and great company make for him in the war by casting up mounts and building forts to cut off many persons seeing he despised the oath by breaking the covenant when lo he had given his hand and had done all these things he shall not escape therefore thus saith the lord god as i live surely mine oath that he hath despised and my covenant that he hath broken even it will i recompense upon his own head and I will spread my net upon him, and he shall be taken in my snare, and I will bring him to Babylon, and will plead with him there for his trespass that he hath trespassed against me. And all his fugitives with all his bands shall fall by the sword, and they that remain shall be scattered toward all winds, and ye shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it. And in the futurist sense, they'll die spiritually. That's what falling by the sword is in the futurist sense, is the spiritual death that most Christians will die at the sixth trumpet when the king of Babylon of the end times appears in Jerusalem, and that fire, smoke, and brimstone issues out of the mouths of his locust army in the fourth and final stage of it, the consumer stage, that's what kills a third part of man spiritually, is that fire, smoke, and brimstone which issues out of their mouths, as you can read of in Revelation chapter 9, that's what kills them, is the deception. That's what it's talking about. They didn't have the seal of God in their forehead, which is the truth of God's word, whereby they would have known that Satan is going to appear in Jerusalem before the true Christ returns. Verse 22, Thus saith the Lord God, I will also take of the highest branch of the high cedar, and will set it, I will crop off from the top his young twigs, a tender one, and will plant it upon an high mountain and eminent. This is speaking of the true Christ who would come from the line of Judah, because Zedekiah's daughters were taken by Jeremiah to Egypt and then to Ireland, where the throne was set up, which went from Ireland to Scotland and then to England. And that's where the scepter of Judah is until the true Christ returns as King of kings and Lord of lords and rules with a rod of iron from that point onward. In the mountain of the height of Israel will I plant it, and it shall bring forth boughs and bear fruit and be a goodly cedar, and under it shall dwell all fowl of every wing in the shadow of the branches thereof shall they dwell, and all the trees of the field shall know that I the Lord have brought down the high tree 
have exalted the low tree, have dried up the green tree, and have made the dry tree to flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken and have done it. And so it is, the true Christ, the tree of life, will return at the seventh trumpet, and he is that stone of Daniel chapter 2 that destroys that statue, which is symbolic of Satan's one world system. He also destroys Satan's role of Antichrist, and you can read of that in Revelation 19. He destroys both the false prophet, that is to say, Satan's role of Antichrist, also known as the little horn of Daniel's fourth beast, as well as Daniel's fourth beast are both destroyed in the lake of fire forever and ever, Satan being locked up in his prison, the bottomless pit, for a thousand years, and at that same time, the first resurrection takes place, the first resurrection into eternal life, but the rest of the dead, the spiritually dead, that is to say, have to wait until the thousand years are finished because they were deceived by Antichrist, Satan, that is to say. And whenever Satan is let loose from his prison for a short season, after the thousand years are finished, whoever follows him then will be blotted out in the lake of fire. Everyone else will go into the eternity, the third world age.